In this video, we will demonstrate how to get started with small group instruction. While many of your students are working at workstations or a workshop, you will meet with a small group of students to target specific learning instruction. This is the most important element of a guided math framework. 96 and 6 tenths, and I want you to roll the 20-sided die. It really starts with learning where the kids are at. And so we do like the MIPI assessment or we use our leaps and bounds and we find out the levels where the kids are at, what they struggle with, what they excel with. And then we create guided math groups based on those needs that the kids have. Let's say they're really struggling with multiplication and division. Our problem solving tasks are for multiplication and division. The games we use within our guided math groups are multiplication and division based. And the games that they play in their groupings um, are multiplication and division based as well, if that's what we're focusing on. If it's graphing, then it's graphing based. 10,000, hundreds, thousand, etc. That's what numbers do, right? So what you're telling me is you have an understanding of what the number system is. It's easier for me to kind of know exactly where they are when they're smaller numbers in group and be really targeted, really focused. Because when I find in my small group instruction, it's very intentional. I want to get that outcome going. I want to maximize the time that I have with the manipulatives, with the guided instruction, with the anchor charts, whatever I'm doing at that time for that group. Um, the smaller that I can have them, I find works is much more manageable when I have the numbers smaller. So you want to pre-assess students before you begin a new concept or a new topic. I suggest grouping students into four levels, novice, apprentice, practitioner and expert. And as you go along teaching the unit and the concepts, what's nice about small group instruction is that it's flexible. As students are learning, you're going to gauge their learning through formative assessments and develop groups through that. How many groups of four can be made out of? I really like that I can target and meet with every single one of my students. So if I know that a student is really struggling with something I can meet with that student and maybe it would take five minutes just to fix a misconception or to dive in a deep, bit deeper and that child is now ready to soar or maybe it takes a little bit longer but either way I know where that child is at and I know where they need to go and how to get them there. What's really important in small group instruction is it needs to be fluent and flexible. So groups are constantly changing based on the needs of each of your students. So you're going to be always formally assessing students as you teach. So when you're planning your small group lessons, you know where to target learning instruction for each of those students. We want to meet the needs of all of our students and we can do that with small groups. Math is really fun. Math is really fun. Why is it really fun, Victoria? Because well, you can just warm my heart. Why is math really fun? Because you get to add and subtract and you have tens, hundreds. What I find the greatest benefit for me, what I see, is the confidence in students. It's such a confidence builder when they can move or gain a concept, understand it, internalize it, show it, and then celebrate it is the biggest thing. And that's what I find in small groups. When you move them along and they actually can then tell you in return or I can actually count to 10 or I can tell you, you know, this is two tens and one one. And to see that smile and then actually say it, that's the biggest success. So that's what I find drives them to want to then continue and they get excited. And so for me, it's a a building the confidence, math confidence, building number sense for students, um, and trust, trusting that they can do it and that math is all around us and math is real world. And when they can feel that, then they take it to the next level. In the next video, we are going to address how to get started with your math workshops and math stations. This is what all of your students are doing while you are working with a small, individual, targeted group of students. So we are going to look at
how do you get started, what might Math Workshop look like, what might be some of the tasks and activities that I can plan for my students. So we will show you how you can actively engage all of your students in a guided math classroom. See you next time and thanks for watching.